Hey, welcome everyone to another episode of Marketing Monday. Yes, where in each episode we talk about marketing and branding tips for you to be able to turn your passion into profit. That's right. That's what Marketing Monday is about. Yes. So before we get started, looks like we got an early bird in here. We got Cooley. Hey, Cooley, I think I'm the first one here. Yes, you are. That's right. That's why you get this. That's right. Big, big up to you. Okay. And then uh, we have him saying, why is it that you can't do a little of everything, which I'm guilty of? Well, because as I said, um, if you have only so many hours in a day and then um, – you're spreading yourself thin to concentrating on you can't really heavily concentrate and become an expert in one or two genres uh if you're spreading yourself super thin i'm not saying don't do them all but i'm saying you should be known for one or two specific complementary genres of photography but we could get into that in a minute okay so um let's get let's get all this other stuff out the way shall we of course if you aren't following me already, shame on you, okay? So make sure you go ahead, check me out on Facebook, uh, uh, Robert Silver Photography. Yes, I'm on Instagram at Robert Silver Photography. And of course, TikTok, Robert Silver Photography. And yes, I am tweeting right along with Elon Musk at Rob Silver Photog, okay? <laughs> now, um, just to let you know, um, Though I have Marketing Monday, we talk about content marketing tips and strategies for you to turn your passion for photography into profits. I do want to let you know, I do host one-on-one -on -one consulting, all right? So if you want any uh, virtual time or in-person, if you're here in the Bay Area, uh, for online marketing strategy, social, market, social media strategy, or content development when it comes to marketing your photography business well then go ahead and send me a quick email at info at robert silver photography dot com all right now as you may know i love doing what i do and all i ask is if you go ahead and smash that like that share and subscribe to my channel okay let the algo know that you like the kind of content i'm creating and that it helps you out okay so go ahead and smash that like for me real quick and um, one other way that you can help support this channel, okay, the best way, I think, but that's just me, um, besides subscribing and liking my content, is go ahead and join my Patreon. That's right. I'm on Patreon where I post daily uh, photography news, tips, tricks, etc. Uh, for all my followers out there um, at patreon.com slash Robert Silver photography okay and trust me the more you help me the more i can help you and dedicate more time to, to uh for ways to help improve your photography all right and thank you a big shout out to all my patreons out there and um all right let's see here let's go back to here so as i said earlier we're gonna be discussing uh earlier meaning on instagram i was just live on instagram um, we will be discussing seven steps to branding your photography. Okay. Now, I I I thought about this topic uh, because I realized these are some small. How can I say? Um, small things you can implement that make a huge change in the long run. They make they they greatly impact your business, and. Um, I've noticed once you get to a particular level and as you begin growing and you see that your um, 
your immediate area may not be as much of a competitor to you as to some of the bigger photographers, right? In terms of name recognition, et cetera. And they all have specific, um, a specific marketing voice of their brand, right? And that's all because of they've been very careful on how they're branding themselves. How do they, they're making sure that they, their perception is um, the value of their companies being perceived in a particular way out in the marketplace, right? And branding is going to help you communicate value. It's going to help you also communicate the potential experience that your next customer may have. And um, that's why logo, your logo is super important. The type of uh, typography, the fonts that you use for your logos, very important. Um, how you design your, your website layout, your business card, your flyers, all your content, whether it be digital marketing, flyer graphics, and, and, and uh, your layout of your Instagram, all these things help to further um, reinforce the branding that, uh, of, your, of your company. Now, your branding is also going to help dictate your marketing strategy, right? Uh, in terms of um, um, the type of clientele you're trying to attract. So branding is very, very, very important. And it's not just for Fortune 500 companies. It's not for mom and pops. It's for you as well as photographers. Because photog remember, you're running a business. It's it's yourself, but you're running a business. And um, and with that said, you're ultimately, you know, well, you're probably doing an entrepreneur or, I mean, a sole proprietor, but you're running a business. So it's best. I, 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 I'm a firm believer that if I see Fortune 500 uh, companies, highly successful, highly valuable companies that move and shake and turn this world, if I see them doing certain particular marketing practices, well, clearly maybe I need to implement that same sort of strategy or at least the mindset in running my own humble photography business, okay? And I noticed that there are certain key things that just work over time. And that's why come back to, you know, coming back full circle, branding is important. Okay. So, um, in the meantime, if you have any questions about your branding, about your photography and how you're positioning yourself in the marketplace, your, how, your website, if you want me to take a look at your website, reach out, send a comment right now. Uh, any question is a good question. Okay. So, but let's get, uh, oh, 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 oh. And for those that don't know what Marketing Monday is, let me just share this with you, okay? Hi, Robert Silver here, and I have a question. Have you been struggling with attracting clients? What about ways to scale and grow your business? Or have you been conflicted with how to use the latest social media apps and trends to grow your audience and influence? Marketing Monday is about helping photographers and any other business really to increase their digital presence with little to no cost by leveraging social media and other creative tools available on the market, as well as keeping you updated on all the latest digital marketing trends happening today. Tune in with me every Monday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on my YouTube channel for strategies, techniques, tips, and advice on how to help build your brand online. And that's what Marketing Monday is generally about. I meant to play that earlier, but, you know, better late than never. Okay, let's get into it, shall we? Um, here we go. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So I found this great article on slrlounge.com. Uh, Very popular website for photography, info, tips, tricks, light, you know, editing, to uh, photography itself, lighting, et cetera, and gear reviews and all that jazz. So go feel free and check them out, okay? Shout out to SLR Lounge. But I thought this topic was really a great, um, I mean, I thought this article was great and it brought up some great points. And, and, and the best part is that this branding that they're talking about is specifically for photographers in mind. So we're not gonna be, you know, talking about overall branding strategies and they're really coming from a very corporate or Fortune 500 uh, mindset. We're, we're this article is straight up for photographers. So I thought these seven things would be great to talk to you folks about. Okay. 
Uh, so he says here, when people think about unique brands, they often think of large retail corporations, right? Fortune 500s like Nike and Apple. Massive marketing campaigns with elite PR companies give them the ability to deliver cons uh, consistent and reinforced messages, right? And uh, to platforms to achieve their goals, marketing goals, whatever that may be. And creating a unique brand with loyal customers isn't reserved for large businesses. Exactly. As I said earlier, that just because uh, Fortune 500 companies are using particular marketing strategies does not mean it's only reserved for them. I would say actually pick up on it because a lot of it you can do, even though it's more on a smaller level, right? Because they have the, the budget and the manpower, but you can still implement that same kind of strategy or at least the mindset when it comes to marketing your photography. All right, let's get back into it. Okay, so, uh, okay. In fact, small businesses like photography studios can build a solid brand that consist, cons, uh, consistently attracts loyal customers. We can speak to our large, uh, uh, to our target audience, build hype, and stand out in local markets. Exactly. And that's how it's going to, branding is going to help you to stick out from the noise. The noise meaning other competitors, other people with photog uh, with cameras. And uh, last time I checked on Instagram, Every minute, there's a new photographer claiming they're a new photographer. So you better get hit with being able to separate yourself from that noise. Um, local markets, and in this for branding article, okay, so here we go. The power of branding for photographers. A powerful brand comp uh, comprises of multiple ingredients, a unique Attractive logo, catchy tagline, unforgettable personality, a distinct voice. You can use the same ingredients to build yours, right? And that's the thing. It's like everything you're doing is to reinforce the uh, perceived value in your cons in your potential customer's mind, right? So and th that's why I said using being very careful of your typography, like what kind of fonts you're using in your graphics, uh, on your website, etc. And one thing I like to do is stay very consistent across the digital mediums that I'm using, unless I can't, like, obviously you can't, can't ch change the font in Instagram. But when I use, when I, uh, upload graphics, yes, in Canva, I will be, um, I will be choosing a very, uh, very similar, not similar, excuse me, the same set of fonts throughout all the graphics I create. Okay. Cause I want consistency. I want it, it could be and, and that consistency is, 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 uh, further reinforcing my brand voice. Okay. Ah, <sighs> now, so the first thing we're going to get into for, Oh, wait, we have a comment real quick. Let me just see this right here. Cooley says, do you ever do business plans? Yes. I've written up three for myself. One of them was for me to be able to graduate college. Okay. I went, uh, I graduated with a, uh, a bachelor of science in music and entertainment business from Full Sail University. And um, to graduate, I had to, I had to create and produce an, a, a, a multi paid uh, business plan. And within that was a marketing plan a brand strategy, pricing strategy, uh, financial forecast, uh, an executive summary, all that jazz. So yes, Cooley, I have, and I recommend everyone to at least dabble in creating at least a marketing strategy, uh, a one-year, uh, three-year, five-year marketing strategy and, 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 and putting numbers on it, meaning like, oh, I want to make this, I want to make this, I want to make this. And then working backwards, okay, how am I going to make that? How am I going to increase my profit by X uh, the next over the next three years? Yada, yada, yada. Marketing strategy at least, okay? If you're not going to do a full-blown business plan. All right, let's get to the first thing. Um, Doopity-doopity-doop. Here we go. So the first thing we're going to go over is identify what makes you special. That is one of the first things about branding. It helps you to... Uh, separate, as I said, what makes you special from the other person with the camera? Okay. That's a very good question. You should ask yourself and be honest. And that's why I said earlier, Cooley and everybody else, being a specialist is going to help you. What makes you, makes you special is what's going to help separate you, uh, in the marketplace. 
because everybody does, you know, um, oh, I like shooting. Let's say for you say, I'm just a portrait photographer. Well, you know, I guess Lindsay Adler could say that, but she's actually a fashion beauty photographer. And so she's, she's making it more defined and therefore more refined in terms of the perceived value of her photography. Okay. It's like being a physician or, um, a cardio, I don't know, a cardio, I don't know doctor's names, but let's say a heart surgeon. Right. And I'm sure they both can help you in some particular way, but one is more general and one is very more specific and the pay grade is different. Okay. So let's get into it. First thing. Um, okay. Right here. Okay. So the first thing, as you can see, uh, number one is identify what makes you special. One of the most important things that you need for your brand is the X factor. It's that, wow, okay, that's why, that's what I can get from this person versus another. It's one thing or even a couple of things that makes you special. Seriously, ask yourself. You have to be critical. You're running a business. It's it's time to, uh, you leave your feelings at home when you clock in, okay? It's about being real. What works? Red and black, positive, negative, okay? It's not sort of works. It's whether it does and produces the results you want or it doesn't. It's just that simple. For, in, for instance, it could be a certain, as it says here, it could. for instance, it could be a certain photography style that's unlike any other style out there. Yeah, see, Cooley, this is, what, this is playing to you right here when you said create your own uh, genre, or uh, niche, et cetera, right here. That could be a way to, for you to to for you to say, signal to the market that you are different in this particular arena and that you specialize in it, thus turning you to a specialist. And pr your perceived value may go up for those who want that kind of photography or just a unique perspective on taking photos that others like, that, that others lack. Yes, your eye, the eye in photography, right? Your eye is what, signifies you from other photographers, your style, your editing approach, your everything, your composition, your light, use of lighting, blah, blah, blah. Those things can help signify what makes you special. Because believe it or not, no matter how, how many new photographers enter the market every day, no one can replicate you. Okay. Remember that no one can replicate you and your approach. That's why I've seen tons of videos on YouTube where They'll take one model, three photographers, and they'll all have different photos. Okay. Yeah, that's why I, you know, that's why I keep saying keep shooting, stay creative. Uh, if you can identify this unique factor, then you make and then you can make it a tagline, incorporate it in the messages of your blogs, social media posts. And et cetera, to build a, a big brand over time. That's right. You just repeat, repeat, re rinse and repeat. And eventually it becomes a part of your company's vernacular, right? It becomes part of your language. That's why, like for me, it's like keep shooting and stay creative. Like I never, I never claim to be perfect. I never claim to know it all, but I do say I work hard, right? I just keep shooting and try to stay creative, try something new, try don't step out of my comfort zone in terms of lighting approach, um, and so forth and so on. So the key is reinforcing this unique characteristic throughout all of your web presence. As I said, consistent messaging, you want to be able to take that uniqueness and leverage it, right? Take that, whatever the X factor that what makes you special and leverage it and promote the hell out of it to the point where it's like, you're the only one that is great at X. Therefore you need to come to me if you want the best results. All right. If you're having a hard time thinking of your X factor, ask yourself these questions. All right. Now pay attention, folks, pay attention. What are my strengths and weaknesses? Now, I've talked about this before, folks. I've talked about this numerous times during previous episodes of Marketing Monday. Here's another one. What makes my photography style different from my competition? Okay. So far, none of this. It just requires you some tea and some meditation. Really, just ask yourself these questions. And here's another question. 
What makes my client's experience different from my competition? That's why I talk, when I talk to you about owning or having a studio space to rent, you are increasing the value of your client's experience just by having access to a studio and thus being able to not only be able to retain the same clients, hopefully attract new ones and increase your price because your perceived value goes up when you have at least regular access to a studio or having your own space. Okay. These are the things that help you, that help uh, you signify to the market. That's what makes you special. Here's what we're talking about. Remember, I, I mentioned this before, the SWOT analysis. Look this up. Google it. It's a simple analysis that's a, that, that helps you to be honest about your brand in the marketplace, right? It, it, it helps you write down what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, what are your, what are your areas of opportunities that you can improve on, and what are your threats? What are your like, whoa, oh, okay, that's where someone can get in on me at. And, 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 and be, and they're just that much more dominant from these answers. Come up with the following, a set of core values. Okay. A, a, a mission statement. Uh, if, if, you know, at least a mission statement, I don't know if you need a tagline for everything. Cause I don't do taglines like that. I did at first. Um, but for sure, a mission statement to at least reinforce uh, to your customers, uh, maybe in uh, invoices as well as um, uh, uh, newsletters, so forth and so on, um, and helps to remind you also, what are you here for? Why are you pro providing this particular service and what separates you from everyone else? Okay. So look up what a mission statement is. That should be like right at the beginning of your, um, um, your um, business plan, right around your executive summary, if you will. Your about us story, right? Definitely. What are you about? What, where, what, what part of your story that separates you and why, um, um, what brought you to this point in photography? Okay. Effective branding for photographer means consist, look at this consistently, including these messages, these around on your website, your business, uh, your business cards, your whole thing, your social media profiles, any print material you create for your business. Okay. So again, you start off with what makes you special. Okay. And then you taking what makes you special, creating a message out of it, right? That mission statement or tagline, and then constantly reinforce that through the messaging all over your social media and web presence, right? For sure on your website. And, uh, even through your, um, uh, maybe even your, 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 um, Instagram profile, your YouTube about section, you're freaking everywhere. Okay. And it needs to be reinforced not only through that, but through the content that you create too. Okay. You can't see talking about family and then you're sitting here doing some, I don't know, some horror or something that might traumatize some children. Okay. We can't be doing that. All right. I do family photography, but you're shooting in the war zone uh, with uh, great you have great photos taken, you know, do, being a photojournalist in a war zone with dead bodies and whatnot. That's not going to work. OK, um, we do have a couple questions or comments, at least we got Cooley in the house. Man, he is he's on fire. <laughs> PPA has a plan that I tried. Yeah, absolutely. PPA is phenomenal for those that don't know. Uh, uh, they are professional photographers of America. Uh, I'm a part of them as well. And uh, I recommend all photographers, especially with this crazy day and age, to get with PPA, get a membership, because then you get, I believe, up to $15,000 worth of gear insurance by being a member. Okay. And then I'll also have access to countless amount of resources through their website. And one of them is like business plan templates. They have uh, release forms, all sorts of stuff. They don't sponsor me at all, but they are a phenomenal resource. And with PPA, um, I think it's through PPA. They're affiliated with WPPI, but either way, I'll be at WPPI. But, um, but go ahead and check out uh, PPA.org, I believe it is. And um, it's a great, it's a great resource. It really is. It's uh, I've I've been on auto pay for years now. So, shout out to PPA. Uh, Cooley comes back. I have thirty years experience and have done it all. So what do I do? 
Now, what do you mean by that exactly? Okay. You have 30 years of experience of photography and have done it all. And so what do I do now? Do you mean, where do I go from here? Because I, I guess I would need to know what, where are your, um, weaknesses? Where are you having your troubles? Remember what I said, SWOT analysis, seriously, write that down. Where are my strengths? Where are my weaknesses? One of mine is procrastination. Okay. That is real. Okay. That is just a, no, matter of fact, I'm not even gonna give it a horn. I'm gonna give it one of these. Okay. I'm, I'm, a, I can be a big procrastinator, believe it or not. I have to get it on calendar. I have to post that I'm doing something and then I'm held accountable because I don't want to be looked at that. I didn't do something. That's why I schedule these live shows. Cause if I just tried to do it spontaneously, I probably wouldn't do it. I have to schedule it out because that schedule holds me accountable that I have to get ready to go live. I have to get the material together, do my research, et cetera, so that I can help all of you folks out. All right. And my assistant has called me out on it a few times. A th shout out to my assistant, Derek. Uh, Cooley says weaknesses. Wish I was more organized. Now that is actually a great, um, I'm glad you said that. I think that's phenomenal for you to at least acknowledge that. Um, I used to be really bad too with uh, like the first couple of years of my financial organization. Like now I've have a spreadsheet. I, I freaking write down every penny. I like, I know where things are. I know where I spent, how much gear money I, you know, wasted and stuff like that. And it's actually helped. The more organized I got, the more income I made. I don't know how to, I don't know how that works out, but just think about it. The more organized I got, the more money I made. Okay. Because that organization, you got to really start small, start small, Cooley. Okay. Start small. Um, first thing I used to, that really helped me was freaking, uh, what is this called? Apple calendar. Okay. Cause I have a Mac, I have a iPhone. I'm in the I'm in the Mac system. These folks got me by the balls over here. Okay, so I'm in all, all I'm all in on Mac. So I use their calendar so much that that thing takes up so much space because I have so much crap on there, and I organize everything in terms of like when I'm doing this, uh, and what, who am I shooting, how much deposit did they pay, how much remaining balance, yeah, da, 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 da. like my calendar has really helped me, you know, when am I going to post this? When am I going to um, <clears throat> uh, go live? When am I going to do my next live photo shoot? Except I have my count. My life is on my calendar. And then I stepped it up by using Google. Yes, exactly. Cooley. Here we go. Yes, exactly. Google calendar is phenomenal because I love being able to, when I book a client, I add their email and then they get an automatic reminder that X situation is coming up shoot or whatnot or consultation. So exactly. So if that works for you, um, I have like five Google emails and they're all tied to one app and I get my notifications. I look at one calendar. I can see all my calendars. And so I have to run my studio through my Google calendar. Either way, start small is what I'm saying. Build that momentum. Okay. Don't overthink the process and then let that organization start spreading out. And then all of a sudden I really, like me, Mondays are my marketing Monday, right? So before I go live with all of you, I go to the gym in the morning, start my day off right, night mental clarity, and then I um, and then for the entire day, I I do nothing but marketing my stuff, whether it be planning shoots, uh, planning content, editing content. Uh, 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 looking at my web, I always look at my website at least once or twice a week to see where I can improve, uh, what did work, what did not work. Okay. You have to be uh, to admit what strategies did not work. Like that's what I do on Monday, but I used to never dedicate time just for marketing. Um, and on Tuesdays, I don't leave the house. I edit, I edit like crazy, whether it be video production, uh, that, uh, that I have to edit and then, uh, or retouching. Like I have a, a client who paid for a rush on his photos to be delivered for Wednesday. So tomorrow I'm dedicating my entire day on coffee and retouching these photos. So all of a sudden your organization will start spilling into, uh, to more areas of your business. So start small is what I'm saying. Sorry. I said all that. 
uh yes loud music therapy whatever helps whatever helps you out but like i said start small with the organization start small with the organization okay um all right let's get back into it our next thing is about branding is create a unique logo for effective branding for you as a photographer okay really concentrate on your logo i think that's super important and um i've seen some wacky stuff like way over the top complicated and then i've seen some stuff that really look clean so um but remember as i said look what the big boys are doing look at how clean effective and punchy their logos can be and then figure out okay now how can i implement that into my logo right into my design if you're if you don't know canva you can create logos very easily for free um through canva at canva.com c-a-n-v-a.com so go check them out play around and that's how i developed my latest logo for robert Silver photography was through canva so shout out to canva and no they are not a sponsor of this video but can be if they want so hit me up um anyway let's get into it Boop. all right number two Create um the next step to branding. Here we go. The next step to branding. Damn. The next step to branding for photographers, if having a uh, a unique and attractive logo that allows you to stand out from your com competition. When your customers see your logo and add social media content videos, then it helps in building brand loyalty. That's uh, that's a hundred percent. And um, I'm also gonna say. A good profile pick too. Folks, you know, having a good headshot of yourself goes a long way. If you can't take a good headshot, portrait, self-portrait, etc., of yourself, that says something right there. If portrait photography is your game. So take the time, take a good one, have it, you know, well lit, edited, be thoughtful about what you're wearing. So I'm gonna place this importance right along with the logo. OK, because on my about section on my website is just one portrait of me. So if I can't get me right, I wouldn't have a problem with them being worried about working with me. Right. Anyway. Um, and then it does help you to stand out. Right. That you look smooth. You look like someone who's taken photos. It looks professional. You look professional. Yeah, it can help you subliminally in the minds of your customers. When your customers see your logo and add social media content, videos, et cetera, then it helps building brand loyalty. Plus, people take your company more seriously when you have a premium logo. Now, for me, I've used logos for like my T-shirts. I have a new T-shirt coming out, folks. So stay on tune for that. It'll say keep keep shooting, stay creative. And then um, um, I'm waiting for a sample to arrive to see if I like the quality. But I'll be offering sweatshirts and hoodies and whatnot. But yes, absolutely. After a while, uh, like when I, when I switched to my latest business logo, a few people were like, hey, we like the old logo. What's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with it. So I little did I know people got used to seeing the consistency and the style of my old logo. So I didn't completely get rid of it. And that's what you normally see on my T-shirts. And that I had since maybe 2017 or 16 or something. So, yes, people do start, aside from getting to know you personally and your aesthetic in terms of your photography, the, your logo does carry along with it, too. Um, all right. When I started photography, uh, getting a unique logo was difficult and costly. It no longer is. As I said, go to canva.com and then type in logos and you have tons of templates. And then you can mod modify, add things, drop in images, etc. I recommend keeping things clean. Okay. What do they call K-I-S-S? Keep it simple, stupid. Okay. These days, much more, you can easily create a logo with very, very little effort. If you have any questions about uh logos or uh what you how yours is looking and etc., again, as I said earlier, feel free to reach out to me and I will help you out. All you got to do is email me at robertsilverphotography.com or you could just head on over and become a member at my Patreon 
at patreon.com slash Robert Silver Photography. Sign up, send me a message about your logo, etc. I'll be glad to help you out. Okay. Or at least give you advice, right? Because at the end of the day, it's your brand. If you're really sold on something and that's just how you feel, I say Mazel Tov, do your thing. I'm not gonna hate on it. Um, but there are I will be more than glad to give you recommendations, even if they're a very strong one. Okay. All right, let's get oh, we have a comment. Oh my god, Cooley's coming in with another one. I think I'm gonna come gonna come out and hang for a week. Hey, well, if you want to come hang out and hang for a week, uh, this this is the Bay Area. Uh, you know, feel free. It, it never it, well, the rain has been the rain has stopped. It's a little chilly, uh, but there's a lot of sun. And I can't wait for the summertime because I plan on going hiking, folks. I tell you that right now. Okay. Nature is calling. Um, okay, let's get to the next thing. Um, uh, boopity boopity boop. Here we go. Branding is going to help you to identify your ideal client. As I said earlier, okay, your branding is going to is going to be part of the messaging you're uh, sending out to the marketplace to attract a specific kind of client, right? I'm going to choose my the type of typog typography or the fonts that I use are going to be geared toward that specific client that would find that attractive, right? If I'm using uh, fonts from like Vogue magazine, but yet I do event photography, it may not come off as um, it may not it may it may not be as um, how can I say, be the right choice, okay, to say the least. All right, um, all right, but let's get into it. I didn't. We want to identify your ideal client. Let's get it, let's go back into the article. Boom, there we are. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. A business is all about selling, right? That's what we're here for. We want to turn your passion into profit, okay? But do you know who you're selling to? If you don't have a clear mental image of your ideal client, then your marketing and branding efforts will be weak, right? That's why I said, if once you be once you I, when I say specialist, I don't say just do one genre of photography for the rest of your life, but at least do one or two style of photography that complement each other, and then you understand that will automatically give you an idea, at least a rough idea of the potential clients you want to attract. If I'm doing weddings and families, clearly I'm looking for new families or families to be right. So my clientele may be. 25 and up, um, or nowadays people get married later. So let's just say later 20s, 28 to 45, right? With families and um, they need a particular income that, you know, depending on the where you are in the country, but let's say here in the Bay Area, you know, they earn $120,000, uh, a household income of at least $150,000, uh, blah, 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 blah. Then you, you start making a, a a, a, a demographic of your a picture of your customer through the demographics of um um that I'm explaining um working class you know whether they're working class or middle class I would you know think middle class or something like that that has a disposable income to pay for your photography packages. If I'm doing, uh, I do model a lot of models, actors, and uh, some fashion photography. So some of my clients. Are younger. They're going to be anywhere from eighteen to, um, let's say, up to thirty. They may not have the as much disposable income as those in their forty-five, right? So the packages they're going to choose, on average, are I have to make sure that they're financially accessible to them. So I can't go heavy-handed because I'll push myself out of the market and they can't afford it. Period except the very few, right? More likely those with more disposable income. But if they're a young model working at a bar, okay, then I have to make sure that my prices are somewhat accessible to them. I won't know that unless I, I, have, a, I have a rough idea of what my client looks like. And therefore, 
the fonts, the marketing style, uh, the branding, everything has to do with attracting and uh, messaging to that specific kind of client. So knowing these potential clients, you kind of you're able to work backwards in a bit, a little bit here. This is because of all your decisions you take, which social media platforms to focus on, right? Depending on your clients, wh where are they going to be? If we're looking for families, well, I might be a little bit more on Facebook more than I would be on Instagram or TikTok for sure. Not that TikTok, but I would be have. I mean, I'd still have a presence on TikTok, but for sure, you're more inclined to see wedding and family on uh you know facebook or you know, on facebook really uh because that's where people at least use facebook to stay in touch with who their other family and friends right or, or stay up to date with their family members that are across the country now um this is uh oh which social media platforms to focus on what local events to attend hello what tone and messaging to use online are influenced by your target audience, right? If you want to throw some, if you're if you're doing uh, hip hop events, then you might want to throw some slang that's used in that space, and vice versa. If you're doing uh, corporate events, you might want to stay away from that slang, right? That's used in hip hop events. For instance, if you want to do wildlife photography, then your message should contain a sense of adventure and hunger for risks, right? And your wonder for wild creatures. Uh, similarly, if you want to be a professional wedding photographer, then you want to develop a brand that's pleasing, comforting, and understands the beauty of relationships and love and caring and the beauty of family. Yes, all those things are going to help. But you got to have a rough idea of who your actual target market is. And that also helps you to dictate the pricing strategy which is a completely different uh, different, um, completely different conversation. Uh, the key takeaway is to specialize and avoid trying to serve every single client. Yes, identify your audience and cater to them on your website, social media, et cetera, et cetera. Specializing in styles such as light and airy or moody or editorial. Or consider focusing in on marketing to specific demographic like culture, ethnicity, or age and group. Yes, like you you might be doing weddings, but you can make it even more. It says, oh, I I take care of same-sex weddings. That's my specialty. I'm really great at it, yada, yada. That can actually be a great niche, a niche for you to concentrate on. That that, that could be a winner right there, a chicken, chicken, a winner, winner, chicken dinner right there. Um, but um, but as I said right here, um, yes, considering specializing in styles, right? As I said, I I don't do the, the new boards, but somebody else may. And that person who does choose to specialize and, and put an emphasis on newborn photography is more likely going to be able to charge a premium for that photography. All right. Let me just. Oh, we have a couple of comments real quick. Ah, uh, Greg Corker comes in. Hey, Greg. Thanks for tuning in. Very useful info. Thank you, brother. Hey, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help you out. Okay. It's like, again, uh, no one was ever there for me at the beginning of, I had to fumble my way, waste money, time, uh, research, Google it, uh, YouTube it, all that stuff. And what I'm trying to do is literally just share that with all of you. If you find one piece of it helpful, hey, I've done my job. That's a win. You know what I mean? And that, that, and that is okay with me. Um, so I'm glad you're finding it useful. I very much appreciate it. Uh, Cooley comes in. Did this once did uh, did this once did a church directory as a fundraiser? Had them leave their email and use it as a mailing for new clients. Well, my friend, I think that's a fantastic. That's gonna get a Randy Savage right there. Oh yeah. I think that that's a great idea and and it worked for you. So absolutely. You know, we got to try new things. Um, I, I say almost leave nothing off the table and uh, what is it? Leave nothing on the table, excuse me, and give it all a go. And if it doesn't cost you a whole lot, it's worth a shot. Um, in fact, make that a t-shirt. If it doesn't cost a lot, it's worth a shot. All right. Um, next thing. Ooh. 
Let me let me let me drink some of this tea real quick, okay, folks. I have to be very conscious. A lot of the, uh, talking get gets to my throat sometimes. I went from coffee to tea lately. Messing with my green tea. Tastes better anyway. Um next thing. Develop a strong personality. Yes, absolutely. Before we get into that, it looks like we have a, a quick que- a comment down here. Greg comes in. How does a photographer's age impact how effective they are, how their clients see them, how best to adapt as your most likely custom- customer shift? Um, that's a, that's a good question. What I would say uh, oh, okay. He also says, I realize that it's probably too much. No, 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 no. I, I think that's a good question. Um, I don't think a photographer's age impacts them overall per se, because the best photographers are the most seasoned and they tend to have some age, right? It, excuse me. Or so I don't insult any ladies experience. Okay. And um, when one of the most common questions people ask is, how long have you been doing this? I don't know. How, if I given 50 cents every time someone asked, I'd be a billionaire. I wouldn't be on this live. Um, but they're they because they want to know your experience. They're like, OK, they want to get a feel how uh, how much you got this. Right. And um, whether they're in good hands and safe hands. Right. So. That so actually, it actually can play to your strengths. What I recommend, what I recommend, okay, seriously, you may not like this, folks. I recommend going to the gym, okay, because age, who cares? But whether you're able to move, uh, go from one area to another area, let's say if you're shooting on location, it's the the best um travel, like. You know, you're you're driving by cliffs and whatnot, and you're shooting over here, and you're shooting over there, and you're huffing and puffing, trying to bring your own gear and everything else. No bueno, okay? Your your health is your wealth, ladies and germs. Your health is your wealth. You got to take care of yourself. And be, and if I'm working in my studio, C stands are heavy. Like seriously, they're they're heavy sons of bitches. So when you're setting up everything, you're gonna climb up a ladder, grab this softback, do all this. You don't want to be praying to God that you make it through this session. Okay, get yourself to the gym. Purple Fitness. Oh, excuse me, Planet Fitness is ten bucks a month. I go to Crunch Fitness for thirteen dollars. Like there's so many affordable ways, but you just gotta get. If, I think the fitness would be the biggest obstacle, not your age at all, okay? Am I going to look at Patrick DeMarchelier and say he's a horrible photographer because he's older, he's seasoned, and he has gray hair? Hail to the no. He's still a phenomenal portrait photographer, okay? His work is phenomenal. If anything, it it got better, Right. So, no, I don't think age is. I think your fitness would be an obstacle for sure. All right. So think about that. I know it's a hard pill to swallow, but I know that my fitness has helped me out tremendously. Uh, Two weeks ago, I had a 15-hour shoot. I kid you not. And wow, I never drank so much coffee and Red Bull in my life to the point where my assistant was like, you might want to stop. And because we kept chugging along, I had like three pieces of pizza and we we had so much to do. And I will have to say, if I was not in physically good shape, uh, it would be, it would it would have been a rough day. And not only that, what kind of message would it send to my client who paid me good money to do this, that I'm damn near need to sit down and have a rest and all this other hoot nanny. Okay. So go ahead and take care of your health because that is your wealth. Okay, ladies and germs. So there we go. Um, Let's get to the next topic, shall we? Got so much to cover here. Oh, as I said, develop a strong personality. Let's get right into it. Okay. Boom. Okay. 
The next step in branding for photographers is to understand that brands have personalities just like humans. They have a certain way of speaking and communicating. They can give good or bad first impressions. They can seem confident or insecure. For instance, Nike is all about pushing yourself to the limit. Okay? Apple has a personality of elite entity. Yes. They always seek the most premium entertainment experience. Takeaway point. If you want to develop a strong photography brand, then you must develop a strong personality for your brand first. One way that I started to be able to develop a personality for my brand was by doing more videos with me in it, talking to you, talking to all of you. Ergo, this live show. I realized that I started to get more loyal, uh, a lo more loyal audience based by showing me and let folks not only hear what I want to share, but also hopefully dig hanging out with me for an hour or two. And um, that you can't beat. You can't get over that. And if people people do business with people they like, you ever notice that certain people who have like okay skills are killing it or getting certain things, et cetera, or getting uh, opportunities. And you're like, how the hell their work is what? Oh my Lord have mercy. It happens in every field. That person has personality. They're able to network, make, create relationships. People want to just be around that person. And therefore they get included into certain opportunities and, and, and um, social situations. That's why I highly recommend you get out, get involved in your local community. I talked about this in another episode of Marketing Monday where, you know, photography is an active sport. It's not just when you're shooting. Go, go to meetup.com, go to uh, uh, Facebook groups and look up your local uh, Facebook group um, photography groups and get involved with other uh, people's um, events. And go out and network. There's always networking events. And a lot of times they're very, very cheap or if not free. And uh, like I have one coming up and it will be for uh, f f uh, Bay Area filmmakers. I'm looking for a script to do my next film. I want to do something creative. So I want to go network. You can't just assume they're going to come find you because you have a picture on Instagram. It, this is an active sport. Got to get out there, get out of the house, get away from the computer and start making human connections. And that's part of this developing a strong personality. Now, also, um, um, was about to say your mission statement is going to help you to find the tone of your personality as well. Right. And who you're and how you're going to be communicating. Like, how do you. How should you communicate your tone to said target audience? That's where that mission statement is going to help you out. That's why earlier when we talked about, um, um, what do we say? What makes you special? The X factor, et cetera. Okay. Those things are going to help you out tremendously. But, oh, here we go. The key takeaway is consistency. For example, if you're going to be quirky and fun, then that has to be your vibe, right? And, and part of your vibe and communication style uh, should be present in all your images, um, your stories, your reels, the way you edit your content, et cetera, as well as what's on your page and how they feel that through your website and your social media profiles and, and all the other content. If you're going to going for luxury, then the theme needs to stay consistent in all of your content. Okay. I like to teach and, and, and motivate and to help you become a f better photographer through my good and bad experiences. And that's why now, like, um, what I'm currently doing for myself, quite honestly, um, to better improve my content for all of you, I switched on my website from it saying my workshop tab is now called education tab. And now I'm going to go to the site that I use um, to host my workshops information. I'm actually going to start now creating a tons of educational content as well as my workshops on there. So I'm fine tuning my personality because that's what I'm noticing uh, uh, that you folks are resonating is not only just my work, but what I share on how I got said work done. And uh, so I'm doubling down on the educational part because 
honestly, I really enjoyed the educating part. I really do. I actually have a, I really enjoy sharing this all with you. Um, so that's what I'm doing for myself. So I'm, I'm swallowing my own pill. Okay. So again, this, this link to this article is in the description section down below. So feel free to check it out for yourself. Let's go ahead and check out a comment. Bam. Who do we got here? Uh Oh, here we go. Cooley says, I have a studio in my garage. Do you think that make me look like a less of a photographer? Hell no. Okay. I think that's great. Um, I think that's a win. Matter of fact, um, I, uh, first of all, as long as you, you, uh, treat your, your garage space or any space as a photography space, right? Don't have your car in there. You know what I mean? Like, like it should be set up and people should have a clear sense of this is a, this is where photography, photography gets done. Have some photos, maybe 16 by 24, like two or three of them of work you've done. Um, have it clean, have everything hung up, looking neat and orderly. Okay. Um, stuff like that. Send that subliminal message that this is a, this is a space where I get awesome work done and you're going to be, you're going to be happy with what you've got. So no shout out to you and your, in your studio garage, just make sure it's pimped out. Okay. Um, I, you know what, Cooley for a full year, what was it? It was 2018 might've been two years, but for sure for a full year, I didn't rent a studio. What did I do? I literally would gut out my living room in my one bedroom apartment and put all my furniture into my bedroom every time I had a client. And I got so many clients for headshots and portraits. I just worked within my limitation, but I had I had tons of my photos. So as soon as they walked into my apartment, they would see all my work framed up with same frames from Michael. So it's all order, organized and looking clean. And they see everything, lights ready, everything's clean incense going or whatever it is you want to make sure it smells good not like a damn garage and people and then they they saw my work and then they see the place like oh shoot i'm shooting in his in his freaking living room but they saw the work they're like all right you know what he, he's got this because he i already see he's done great work his place looks clean it looks orderly it looks like this is where he takes his photos well that this is where he takes his photos and then boom okay so that year Matter of fact, I split up from a girlfriend and I made 30% more. Okay. Because I worried, I, I, I made sure that everything sent the message of professional portrait photographer. So if you came to my apartment and you're going to get your headshots, it's going to look like I get awesome work done here. So you do the same thing. Okay. So instead of pimp my ride or pimp my crib, you better go ahead and really do a SWOT analysis about your garage space, what you can improve on and pimp that garage, brother. Okay. So go ahead and do that. Uh, Greg comes in and says, if you get a chance, consider hanging out at Chuck talks or AP studios live stream Wednesday at noon or Saturday at 9 PM. Damn, Saturday at 9 p.m. They go hard. Uh, they are a group that has people who would benefit from your input. Um, is that are the Greg, are these on YouTube? Like they said, benefit from my input. Now, is this a um what what do they have it where the people talk all day? Uh um Clubhouse? Is this a clubhouse thing or is this uh on Facebook? Help me understand. Feel free to email me these particular things, uh, the details or links at info at Robert silver photography.com. This sounds very interesting. And of course, if they want to welcome me on, I'm more than glad to give my two cents, three cents, four and five cents. Okay. All right. Let's get back into it. Shall we? Woo. We're on fire folks. I'm proud of us. Number five. Keep it simple when branding for photographers. Okay. What did I say? Kiss. K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple. Stupid. Okay. That actually goes a long way. That, that, that helps you from realizing like sometimes we do too much. That could work on your editing, your lighting, um, uh, for sure your logo. 
like a lot of stuff. Your graphic design, when you're creating still graphics to promote your work, like keep it simple, straight to the point. That was one of the best things I learned over at Full Sail. Um, there was a course on creating um, PowerPoints that we did. And it was like, if you can't wrap it up in 20 slides, you're you're doing too much, right? And you had to simplify, you know, feng shui. So like there's something, there's something powerful about simplicity. So keep it simple, keep it direct, get right to the point. And that also helped me to make my portrait photography packages very tight, very simple, right? Go to McDonald's, okay? Small, medium, large. Which one do you want? That's it. What do you want? Not small, small-ish, small, medium-ish. No, keep it simple. Small, medium, large. Okay? When I do my videography rate, I only have two rates for videography. Half day, full day. Let's talk about your, what do you need done? And then I will judge on whether I'm going to do a half day rate, full day rate. That's it. Keep it simple. Uh, wedding. I have, I have three wedding packages and one economy package. That's it. Keep it simple. Don't give them. If you give them too many options, oh, boy, you'll be talking back and forth. They'll be hemming and humming. You'll confuse them. Don't give them options. Give them one, two, three. That's it. Three at the most is what I recommend. But either way, keep it simple. That's such a great way for you to check to see whether you're, um, you've, you're going overboard. You're doing too much. You're overthinking it. Um, but let's see what SLR Lounge says, okay? Get to that. Uh, boom, bada, bing. Here we go. All right. An important rule in branding for photographers is simplicity. Yes. Let it. Let your work do all the talking. I'm going to get to that. Uh, remind me to get back to that. Let your work do all the talking. You don't want to create a website that's uh, uh, replete with all kinds of fonts and colors or use too much jargon in your social media posts and blog posts, get to the point at which you sound too technical or highbrow. What you need is simplicity. Simplicity is messaging. In messaging style and just about everything. A viewer should be able to tell what you do and why you're different within five seconds of viewing your website. You hear that? <laughs> within five seconds, folks, they should know. Now, let's take a little trip, shall we? Let's take a little trip. Um, I wish I could save it. Okay, we're going to remove that. Okay, we're going to take a little trip to my website. Okay. All right, here we are. Here's my website. Whoops. I'm on a damn. There we go. This right here, okay? This right here, this part of your website, believe it or not, I'm not a mega, mega website design, uh, what do you call it, web professional, engineer, etc. but I know for sure, okay, um, when it comes to internet marketing, your website, this portion right here is more valuable than air itself. This is money. Everything you have right in this section needs to say everything that, 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 um, that last uh, comment in the article said. It needs to be simple. It needs to communicate who you are, what makes you special in less than five seconds. So clearly, Robert Hill Photography, right? And then my work. That's it. That's all that needs to say, say whether you want to mess with me or not. Does that make sense? That right there. You don't see anything else, do you? <laughs> You don't see any words. You don't see any jargons. You don't see special deal, promotion, none of that crap. It's just my work, okay? And that's all that should be there for you as well. Go, it, what do you, my work. That says everything about it. Do you like my lighting? Well, look at my work. My work says that. My work says, do you like my composition? My work says, do you like my editing? That's it. My work does all the talking for me. And that's why I, I want you folks to at least once a week, at least, at least, at least once a week, go through your website and be honest, right? What can I improve? What am I missing? 
Am I being too repetitive? Look at my images right now, okay? Just stare at the glory of my images. But honestly, you don't see repeat of one model or, or, or subject in the same outfit. You see diversity in terms of composition, lighting, indoor, outdoor, um, the way I shot it. Um, it's, it's just diverse, okay? I don't have one model, same outfit, six different poses. No, 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 don't do that, okay? So immediately they can see I've worked with a lot of models. They can see I've shot in numerous different kinds of conditions. I could do indoor, outdoor, in a building, on top of it, whatever. This is all my images are saying this, okay, without me having to say it. That's why, ergo, I don't have any jargon or whatever on the top of my page. Now, this is your money section. Now, if they like you, they're going to scroll down and see some more stuff. But as you can tell, overall, except this one section here for my workshop, it's all about photos. Little bit of text, photos. Here are my galleries, photos. Okay, this is the most text I have. But then right here, my, my live shows, obviously, photos. Boom, right? Here's my latest. Even my fonts are smaller, right? This is my latest photo shoot. Boom. My published work. Boom. Photos, photos, photos. It's all about my work. And when I go to portraits, right? Even when I go to the page, if a client clicks on portraits for headshots, all they see is photos. There's not any, there's no words except at the end where it says, follow me. Okay. It's all about, let my, let your work do all the talking. Okay, let your work do all the talking. This will tell them in five seconds whether they do want to work with you or not because people pay for what they want. Okay. Now here you can see even with my pack, I say starting at, I don't say that that's the final say. That's where it starts. But anywho, let your work do all the talking. Let it do all the talking. Okay. Little about a little amount of text if possible. All right. So that's just my personal recommendation. But you know, you could do you. You know, do do what you want. Uh, you know, you know. I know I don't, I don't have all the keys to success. That's for sure. I'm out here hustling, brother and sisters. Okay. Um, let me get back to the seven steps. Here we go. Cool. Anyway, it looks like we have some comments. Let's go back. Let's check it out. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Greg says, will do. Yes, they are mostly Nikon users. Oh, great. Okay, cool. Though our other equipment users are present, also check out Vahography. Yes, I know Vahography. He's doing his thing. He's a Nikon um, death metal dude, you know, metal, metal, hardcore metal dude. Yeah, I like his vibe. He's very unique. And uh, I appreciate his authentic authenticity. So, yeah, shout out to Vahography. So, um, okay, cool. Yeah, Greg, send me that email, info at robertsilverphotography.com. Let's, con you know, sh share share anything. I'm always willing to learn, be exposed to new things. And that's why I tell all of you to keep shooting and stay creative. Get out of your rut. Try something new. So thank you, Greg, for bringing that up. Uh, for weddings, do you insist they pay up front? Now that, my friend, is a great question, okay? Um, with weddings, I always do a minimum amount because depending on the package, it can be a pretty large package and not everybody has fit because overall, okay, first of all, I want 50% down. 50% is non-refundable, okay? 50% is non-refundable. I clearly stated you have to, especially when it comes to contracts, it has to be very explicit. You have to communicate that very clearly, okay? I do it in initial email. I do it in the invoice. I do it in my packages. Everywhere it says 50% is 50 is non-refundable. Hold on. Uh, I have somebody at my door. Give me a second, folks. Good evening, 
All right. Sorry about that. I have a uh, I have a, a monthly member at my uh, studio, and she was dropping off some keys, so I apologize for that. All right. Now, um, she's a young photographer doing her thing, and I'm pretty pretty proud of her. She's out there hustling. She really is. She's no joke. She she's not playing. All right. Um. So back to what we were saying. First of all, fifty percent is up front of the total cost. Now everybody has the total cost of certain packages up front, right? I get it. So I also have a minimum for me. It's 500 bucks. It's like 500 bucks locks in your wedding on a calendar and the price of the package you chose, but up to 50% of the total cost is non-refundable. Okay. And trust me, that has saved me so much, so many times because what happens is, um, you'll spend hours of consultation with them, researching the wedding venue, planning, and all this other stuff. You need to be compensated for that time. That's consultation time. That pre-production time is, is money spent. It's time used. So that's why 50% non-refundable. Now, I've had weddings that had to reschedule with COVID and everything else. and da, 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 da. No problem. I have no problem uh, crediting people. But they do will not get that 50% back. That is a wrap. Okay. Nope. Um, so that's what I res recommend. Um, now I do have the final balance is always due three weeks prior or two weeks if you're a nice person prior to the wedding date. So when I show up to a wedding, I'm already paid. I already have my money for my assistant ready to go. Like, and then I always um, budget 10% toward gear in case you need another soft box or so an extra battery or two. You know, make sure you're charging accordingly to make sure that 10%, 10 to 20% goes towards gear for that said event or wedding. Okay. So by the time you show up, photographers, you need to be paid in full. You hear that? Paid in full before you show up. And you, you don't do the, you don't switch it up on them. That's why everything has to be explained in detail so that there's a paper trail. It's in the PDF of your packages that you have 50% of the total balance is non-refundable deposit. And then secondly, I need to be paid in full, the full remaining balance due three weeks or whatever the weeks is before the wedding date. Okay. So that when you step up, you're paid in full. The day of the wedding is not about you running around looking for your check and your last deposit. No. Okay? You're, you're, no. I've heard all sorts of wacky stuff. And none of that wacky stuff has ever worked for me, but I've always been paid for my weddings before I showed up. Because I started the conversation saying I need to be paid in full by the time your wedding date has come. And I've never had a problem. Never had a problem because I communicated that. I expressed it through email, through uh, my PDF, et cetera, and through the invoice that they paid and signed. Um, so therefore, they never had a problem. Okay. So that's what I recommend, Greg. I hope that helps you out. Cool. He says, do you watermark your images? Another great question. Um, no. With AI technology, which we'll be talking about uh, on Thursday, I believe, for uh, Let's Talk Photography, um, there, are a, there are apps, bro, that like they can literally, I don't care what you do, they'll take it off. And anybody that's good at Photoshop can already take it off. And then I, w w my, big, my biggest decision to stop using watermarks was um, the biggest photographers that post their images like we're talking about Lindsay Adler or 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 uh, McNally or you know Peter Hurley, whoever, they don't watermark their images. Granted, they probably have the money to come and sue your ass if you're trying to use it commercially, but they don't do it, and they don't do it on their website. So I was like, what the hell am I doing it for? Again, if the Fortune Five Hundreds are using particular certain strategies and they're making all this money, they're they're huge companies, successful companies. Maybe I need to implement the same kind of mindset and strategy. So there, and then that's exactly what I applied when I'm looking at the highly successful photographers in my genre. And I'm like, none of them are doing that crap. So what the hell am I doing? So I stopped wasting my time about that because I'm only posting photos that are like one and a half megabytes. You know, if you feel like you could do something wondrous with that, you know, mazel tov to you. And if I find out, 
you know, I have a family attorney, so we will be trying to get paid. Okay. Um, so that's my thing. Don't, don't, don't worry about the paranoia of whether you should watermark or not, because guess what? You'll lose that battle. People can just take, rip it off anyway. So whatever, you know, again, uh, people can't duplicate you. They might be able to take your image or whatever. And which is, you know, few and far between, I think, um, but they can't replicate you. And plus, I, I own the raw file. If they do anything, I have the negative. I have the negative. I say, Your Honor, how do I have the negative, the original raw file, but this person used it on X? Let it sh Tell them to show the raw file. Because I, I took it on whatever date. And whatever date that is, I'm pretty sure it will be the date, uh, an earlier date than that person who took my shit and used it for some stupid ad. So... You know, there are particular ways, and I'm a sneaky son of a gun, and I recommend you to not sweat the small stuff, all right? Greg says, Cooley, uh, Presley, did you hear about software that is available to remove? Exactly, exactly. So, you know, they're going to, people are going to do whatever they're going to do, you know what I mean? If they want to take your photo and be that kind of particular way and avoid charging you, trust me, just know your rights. PPA can highly it can do it has resources to help you educate you on your on your rights as a photographer as a copyright owner and uh, go 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 swinging for the you know swing for the fences you know go hard if if you find someone commercially exploiting it but if they reshare something all the big brands like recently Nikon liked the photo I did which was awesome and they want to reshare it. They have their marketing company reach out. You have to sign all this paperwork. Like legit companies would rather just ask your permission or whatever than try to rip you off. Maybe some chi company in China or something. But in America, you know, you 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 sue them. You're going to get a lot of, for damages. So they're not going to play around. Um, and they don't want that name and reputation for most reputable companies. Cooley says, Take, it takes good money to buy good whiskey. Yes, it does. Okay. Absolutely. Um, what metadata and image? Okay, now that's a, that's an entirely different situation when we're talking about metadata and images. Uh, that might be actually. Let me type that down. That's actually a good one. Let me type metadata and images. Oh, you can uh simply um one thing is um in your camera you can put the copyright like embedded in your files, right? As you take it, it'll say it in there. You could also do that inside of um, inside of uh, Lightroom, et cetera. But if they put it into a, there are ways to get around all that crap. Like I said, don't, don't sweat the small stuff. If you own the original raw files, that's a pretty hard, that's a pretty solid case to say, I was the original creator and I own these photos because I own the negatives. You know what I mean? That's the best thing to negatives right there, the digital digital versions. So again, don't sweat the small stuff. Worrying about shooting more, staying creative, right? That's what I say, all right? All right, let's get to the next topic real quick, folks. Um, all right. Connect emotionally. That's right. Connect emotionally, folks. Um, I don't have a crying baby sound, but. Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to connect with your clientele. Okay. Not on a physical, but on a mental, emotional level, folks. That's right. All right. So that's what this section is going to be about. Oh, before we get to that, looks like we have a quick comment. Andre comes in, who is a who is a Patreon uh, supporter. Shout out to Andre. Yeah. Hi, Robert. Uh, always a pleasure to learn from you. How did you start professionally? Portrait, fashion, all the above. Well, let's uh, go down memory lane, shall we? Uh, yes. When I was a wee lad. Uh, it was actually about 2011 or something. I was, um, I actually started photography by accident. That's the weird thing. I actually started by accident. I was uh, majoring in bu music business and entertainment. And part of it, I was developing and working with like some new hip hop artists. 
in, in my local area, put my uh, college knowledge into work because I was really excited. I wanted to be a part of the, uh, I wanted to be like a, a record label executive or label manager or an A&R <coughs> before photography. Uh, but before that, I went to Academy of Art for like one semester, like two years before I changed my major to to this. Now, as I was developing these artists, they needed, they needed, this is like at the very, very, very beginning of Facebook and stuff. They needed, um, I don't even think Facebook was there now that I think about it, but, oh yeah, it was. They, they needed um, photography for their album covers and some promotional stuff, right? And I actually was trying to hire photographers. You know, at that time, they were like, I guess, not when I look at them, they were very beginner, but anyway. They were recommended from the artist. Oh, go hire this guy. I said, okay, cool. And I was willing to pay him and everything. And they would show up late and, you know, some fool um, forgot he was supposed to meet up with us. And one person got mad because when he was late, we called him and woke him up. Can you believe that? So, it, it like, after a few times, I was like, WTF, this is crazy. So, I looked in the mirror. I said, you know what? I took one semester at Academy of Art for because uh, my major at that time was film directing. And I said, I learned the basics, aperture, uh, shutter speed, ISO, you know, composition, stuff like that. I said, well, you know what? I can't be any worse than these freaking fools over here. So I got my uh, next uh, what is it? Uh, college money, you know, that they send you for uh, financial aid. And I took that and bought a D3100 Nikon two lens kit from Best Buy. Okay. Shout out to Nikon. So I got that kit, the two lens kit and, uh, which, um, hold on. Was it a two lens kit? Yeah, I did. Okay. But I ended up selling that. Okay. Um, my daughter now owns that camera. I gave it to her, but the thing is the, so I got that, and that's where it started. So I shot his stuff. I stopped. Um, okay, so I shot some of his stuff, uh, the artist stuff, whether it be like just photos for his album covers, singles, stuff like that. And then my buddy, he played in a bossa nova band. He said, hey, I'm playing. Can you come to my show? And I, I want to get more in photography. I was actually liking it as I was going to school for a completely, you know, different thing. And I was like, yeah, I'll show up, man. Yeah, I'll come show up. And I just wanted to use my camera. So as he's playing with his band, I'd shoot, you know, event photography. And then after about three times, I said, hey, man, you know, I, I have no problem, but I got to edit and everything else. Can you shoot me a hundred bucks? And I'll come and cover your stuff. So he's like, okay, I could do that. And eventually that that's really what started it all. So I was doing event photography for my buddy's band, and then eventually nightclubs. I was doing nightclub photography for a while, and I was getting hired by DJs who wanted promotional photos for the nights that they played at X Club, whatever club that was. So I charged like 150 bucks. Like I, I didn't know what I was doing when it came to charging. And then all of a sudden, I was like, I'm gonna do headshots. And you know, then you know, uh, um, I always loved the photos in Vogue and, 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 uh, GQ magazine. And I was like, I'm going to do that. And that's when I started to get into doing headshots and portraits. Cause I looked at GQ and, and I literally said to myself, I can do that. I don't know how they did it, but I know I can do it. And then that's when I started to go hard in the paint with portraits. But my problem was, as I said earlier, okay, Jack of all trades, I was doing like, I was advertising. I do everything. I was a, it, my, I was a hot mess, quite honestly. But that's really how I got started from event photography, and it was all by accident, quite honestly. And then by the time I graduated college uh, for music business entertainment, um, I was already a paid photographer. And then uh, what did I say by then? And then I put in my. I gave myself six months to quit my full-time job. I quit it in two months and just said, screw it. And then years later, here I am. So I made a lot of mistakes and wasted a lot of money. So thanks for that question, Andre. Um, that's how I got started. But I started with event, events. 
okay? Events, ironically. And then I just love fashion. I love portraits and fashion, quite honestly. I just love the creativity. I love the people involved in the space. Um, of course, models don't hurt working with them. Um, but I do a lot of commercial stuff too. But it's just, you know, you find your niche. You find what you're passionate about. Go hard in the paint. Your work will reflect what you're passionate about and why people should work with you. So there you go. Uh, Cooley says, first camera Canon AE1. Wow, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, my humble beginnings, folks. Humble beginnings. Wow, great story. So cool. Sorry if I inter interrupted your program. Absolutely not. Thank you very much for that question. Okay, um, I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully it inspires others in terms of not feeling intimidated by the process. I had zero clue where I was going. I had zero clue how to get there. I knew that uh, once I quit my job and I became a full-time photographer, remember, it was a different time then folks it's not now now it costs so much rent was like a thousand dollars or something for my one bedroom like it was nothing compared to what it is now now it's doubled but the um but when i did i was very scared and that's being scared and being with your back against the wall and rent to pay etc um as jay-z says desperation breeds a hustler and it's either sink or swim fight or flight Okay, so um, hopefully that helps you all out. You know, I, as I said, I'm I'm still in the water here swimming with all of you. There's nothing special about me. I'm just going live and you like what I'm saying. But trust me, I'm out here swinging, swinging, trying to win. Okay, I'm uh, maybe round 15 right now. Okay, um, let's get back into it, shall we? As I said. Brandon is going to help you to connect emotionally. Now let's get into it. Okay. The end goal of all brands for most businesses is generating a lot of revenue. Hello. However, emotions sit at the core of every major brand. This is because brands work uh, brand works only if it connects with a person on an emotional level. What did I say earlier, folks? People do business with people they like. Okay? They have to like you. We talked about personality, and here we go, connecting emotionally. That's why a lot of times getting out, networking with folks, okay, get, get connect with them on an emotional level, that they like you, they want to support you. Um, I've noticed that uh, shout out to my Patreon members. Hey, oh, right. Um, that they, those I've noticed and I could be wrong, but the ones who have supported me on Patreon are those who actually not only enjoy my content, but like me as well. Okay. And find some sort of reason to say, Hey, I'm going to support this guy. He's doing his thing. I like what he's doing. It's helping me out and he's genuine. Therefore I connected with them. What? Emotionally. Okay. And that's what you want to be able to do too. You want to be able to communicate that you have their best interest at heart. That's why your mission statement's important, how you your design and your layout, everything else is going to communicate that emotionally. You want them to be emotionally attached to you, especially when it comes to weddings and family portraits, 150%. Like that is big, definitely emotionally. And that's why like I see uh, women really excel in family and wedding photography because uh, women tend to be more of the better or they're way stronger at, at, at uh, being personable, right? They're more personable that, and we are more logical and maybe more like better at being in a cubicle and engineering all damn day. Uh, not to say that they can't, but they are very good at being very personable and making friends and, 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 and stuff like that and finding little things to talk about forever. Now, with that said, that's a great strength, especially if you're talking about weddings, because most of the time you're selling to who? The the bride-to-be and her mother, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a great talent, a great natural ability to have. Not saying that men can't, but, and I've had plenty of successful weddings myself, but I just, I have seen uh, when it comes to those arenas, when women, uh, uh, when, when they do wedding photography, a lot of them 
heavily just do wedding and family portraits and they make a killing. And I can see why that is because it, it involves a lot of emotional connection uh, that that naturally come uh, that comes naturally uh, for them. And men, we have to work a little bit harder sometimes when it comes to that. Um, you know, and not saying we can, I'm just saying it's not as natural. So anywho, um, this is because, and that's why I said go out and network. This is where you could practice that, uh, uh, men and women too. This is where you can practice connecting and, and talking and creating small talk, but yet building strong bonds. And, um, when you go out and be, just be around other photographers and, and shoot the shit and really build that skill. It is a skill. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Because a brand works only if it connects with a person on an emotional level. Otherwise it's just another business in one trade industry or another. Exactly. Otherwise they just know you're selling to them. <laughs> I mean, like they know you want their business. Like, duh, but that you gotta, you gotta hook them, not just hook them, but you gotta reel them in. You got to make them feel comfortable. Not only that, you got to make them feel like they're happy to give you your money, to give you your money. Right. When I hear security, uh, like when, um, Apple is really hypersensitive about, you know, our data protection and security on our phones and police can't just walk up and just open it up and do whatever they want and whatever. I actually, I actually, that connected with me emotionally. I said, I like that they prioritize our security over, you know, government officials or police, et cetera, because it could, it could lead you down a certain rabbit hole, in my opinion, uh, that I don't want to go. And um, so I, I, that, that makes me more emotionally invested in uh, their products and supporting that company overall. Like my money's going somewhere beyond just a phone, but also in a corporate culture that has my interests at heart. At least I think it does, right? And that's one way that they connect emotionally and why I proudly, you know, I just got an, an Apple watch for the first time and I, I'm i happy with it. Did I need one? Eh, probably, probably not, but you know, it's kind of cool. And, you know, it didn't cost a whole lot, so whatever. And, um, but I felt, further investing in that company because I'm connected with them on an emotional level as well as a, uh, uh, a product level. All right. Some of the main attributes that your photography brand should have are charisma, passion, and reliance, right? That's why I said, what? Turn your passion into profit. Gotta have the passion because when the profit ain't there, you better be passionate about your work. Okay. <laughs> Like I said, turn your passion into profits. All right. Some of the main attributes. Oh, use these emotions to build stronger bonds with your customers. And I wouldn't even say even customers. Um, even when you're shooting trade work, all the people on your set, whether it be hairstylist, makeup artist, mo model, whatever, you should be practicing this, the charisma. Um, where does it say? Charisma. Uh, ex uh, expressing your passion, uh, being reliable, uh, when it says reliance, being reliable, being in control. Cause as a photographer, you are the director of that project. You're the one they're going to ultimately fall on when it comes to decision-making and whether the project is awesome or not. Okay. So build these strong bonds with them as well. They're just as important. I get referrals from creative people I've worked with for free as well as customers, okay? Um, you will see that is approach, uh, that this approach will help you create more regular customers. As I said, referrals, okay? I think we want referrals, don't we? So, anywho, let's go ahead. Looks like we do have comments. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Uh, up. Daniel Jeffries comes in. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Hold on. I'm going to play this for him. All right. That was for you, Daniels. What's up, Rod? I'm in the house. That's what I'm talking about, brother. Hey, we always got room for brothers in the house. There we go. And then Andre says, don't talk about wedding photography. My wedding photographer was awful. Ooh, damn. Sorry to hear that. Uh, wish I could share some pictures. Woo wee! You want to you, you want to put your wedding photographer on blast, brother? 
<laughs> well, you know what? Uh, I've made. You know what? I have. Okay, folks, I'm going to share with you a story. Okay. Um, I messed up one time. I mean, I mean, I messed up. Okay, on a wedding. Oh, Jesus! It wasn't that I messed up. The wedding actually came out fantastic. Like everything I hoped, it did. Okay. And what happened was the next day I was going to New York for LA Fashion Week. Okay. So I had all of their raw files on a, an external hard drive, not a SSD. Okay. It was a regular hard drive spinning, you know, hard drive. Now I get to New York. I slap the uh, um, hard drive into my laptop, MacBook Pro, and I'm like, I'm about to get to work. Guess what? My whole entire four terabytes corrupted, corrupted like a like a thief in the night corrupt. Okay, like a politician corrupt. It was crazy, man. And that wedding was my first same sex wedding. And I was so proud. I was like, man, I can't wait to get to these photos. They're going to look great. They look great. Everything's looking great. Man, oh, man, this is about to go down. And, um, woo, I, I mean, I had to do so much to recover from that situation because all the raw files got corrupt, at least like 60, 70 percent of the photos. Thankfully, I had large JPEGs. So I was able to recover some of the photos that they actually chose, but I gave them twice as many photos than their package to make up for this situation. They weren't upset. I mean, the, he, one of the partners were still upset, uh, but the uh, but oh, you know, I could I, I I said you know when it came to technology, I only could do what I could do. But I apologized profuse, profusely, I believe is the word, and um, you know. It is what it is, but wow, that was a huge L on my end for sure. Yes, it was. I took that right on the chin, man. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do, but shout out to them because they look great and the images look great. So shout out to that. And thankfully, they didn't post anything negative on my Yelp. So thank God. Um, so we've all been there. Um, Cooley, is it good to be huggable and lovable? Uh, I'm gonna have to say a big fat no. Don't be huggable, okay? Unless you know your model and you guys have that rapport, etc. You know, I would probably um stay away just the way things are nowadays. Like, yeah, you know, you don't want to be me too, she too, and every other two up the zing zang and a ting tang. Have you selling your memory cards? Your 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 camera bags and everything else and your knickknack patty wax to get away from this trouble. So do not do it unless you have that particular kind of rapport. Okay. It's my recommendation. Hands off. You understand? Maybe a fist bump or something, you know? Or, or one of these. Okay. That right there can never go wrong. So that I'm just being funny, but honestly, that's my best recommendation. But lovable in terms of charisma, 150%. Be kind. You know, uh, have some coffee for folks. Um, the uh, coffee and some, uh, some, some. Uh, you know what I, 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 I like getting um, a fruit spread, putting it on a table for folks to bite on. Cause folks get hungry after a couple hours. Some crackers and whatnot, nothing too heavy, cause you got a model and whatnot. But you know, a little goes a long way. So there is a way for you to be lovable in that sense, cause you're being caring. Um, and, and it shows that you are passionate about, uh, presenting yourself professionally and you care about others. So, you know, there are other ways you can do that. Okay. Cooley. Um, Matthew, Hey, Matthew G. Oh my God, man. We, we me and this guy go back to high school. Hey, -o. what's up, Matt? Thank you very much for checking on in with the smiley face, man. I need smiles in my life. Cause some days, you know, it feels like a frown. So, all right, let's get back into it, folks. We're on number seven, believe it or not. Step number seven to branding yourself a photographer. Build a spectacular website. <laughs> build a spectacular website. And that's why I said earlier, at least once a week, dedicate an hour to revisiting your website analytically, okay? Taking all of your emotions out of it. Really dissecting, where can I improve? 
what looks good, what works, how do I duplicate what does work, how do I take away what doesn't, what what new things have I learned that might be able to help me out, and then and then update it. Okay, that your website is your ultimate calling card. Your again, the diff here the here here's the your social media is for your most recent work, but your website is for your best work. I'll say it again. Your Instagram is for your most recent work. You updating them. Look what I have going on. Today is this. I'm up to that. But your website displays your very best work. It could be work from five, six, seven years ago. If it still holds its weight, then it deserves to be on your website. But not every photo and not every shoot that you do deserves to be on your website because that is for where you display your very best work. Okay. So both, both, um, platforms serves a very important purpose, but you have to realize they're both not the same. They don't both do the same thing, but they both serve a very important purpose. All right, folks. So that's why, as I said, when you go to my website, that first part portion is your is golden. It is prime real estate. That first section, when you go to the website, that immediate section, what does it say? What do you do? Why should they work with you? Remember those questions? In that first section of your website, when it uploads, it needs to answer all of that. I am this. This is what I'm doing. And this is why you need to work with me. Okay? And for me, I let my photos do all the talking. Let it do all the talking. You know what? Because you folks probably think I'm 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 uh exaggerating here. This is what I'm gonna do for you, because I'm such a nice guy. Okay. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to uh All right, here we go. So you guys don't think I'm just blowing hot air up your butt. Check this out. This photographer is much bigger than me. She's one of my favorites. I've said her name quite a bit. Lindsay Adler Photography. Shout out to Lindsay Adler. <laughs> Killing it. Okay. I love her work. Her work is absolutely phenomenal. But take a look. What did I say? The first portion of the website, and this is website design or like marketing uh, 101. I learned this when I was trying to get my master's in, in uh, internet marketing. I did half of it. I was in a bad relationship. I had to drop out and drop her. You understand? So anyway, but this first part is prime real estate. There's nothing more important on your website than this section here. What does she say? Who am I? Lindsay Adler. What do I do? Portraits and beauty, fashion photography. Clearly, she doesn't have any anything else except her tabs up front and uh and uh her photos and her name. I mean, come on, folks. And she's getting a big, 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 big money. Okay. If you think my workshops are expensive, you clearly haven't tried signing up to one of hers. Okay. Cause uh you know, her, 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 one person could damn near pay for my studio rent. Do you understand what I'm saying? So shout out to Lindsay Adler. Okay. Smashing it. But look at the work that immediately lets you know the, the quality, uh, the expected experience, right? This is all branding. This is all branding. So again, work backwards. If someone who's killing it in the game, uh, Canon ambassador, a, a, a multi-time author, um, you know, she's worked with the biggest brands out there. If she, if they are doing this particular strategy that I just mentioned to you, well, clearly you need to think about how you can implement that as well. You don't see watermarks, none of that crap. It's just big photos, big, beautiful, gorgeous photos in her name. Done. That's what I do. Now, she does fashion and beauty photography. Ergo, her font and her typography of her name reflects that aesthetic. Okay? So shout out to Lindsay again. 
and that's and that uh, i just wanted to show you that real quick okay um hold on let, let me go back to this and there we go all right now before we get into number seven real quick it looks like we have a couple of comments um okay cooley says it was a joke oh <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, anyway, I I, I got a, I, I guess I have an opinion about everything. So sorry about that, Cooley. <laughs> uh, Andre says, as someone who is investing in learning digital marketing in terms of website SEO is key for your website to be seen. 100%. Excuse me. And that's why we are going to be talking about that in a future episode of Marketing Monday. SEO is is extremely effective. It's free. Did you hear what I just said? It's free. Okay. All you got to do is, um, but all these things we've been talking about are going to help you to be able to better uh, implement a more effective SEO marketing strategy, right? Knowing who your clients are, the voice, um, your demographics of the clients, excuse me, and stuff like that. And what genre of photography you're doing and, um, and want to be known for. So a hundred percent, that's what I did as well. Andre, I was, I was, I was uh, going to get my master's in digital marketing. Uh, and, um, yes, SEO is hundred percent. And that's what I do too. That's part of the list of uh, a weekly list that you should be doing to your website, revisiting it and looking at your SEO, looking at what works, looking at the traffic using Google analytics can help you to understand where your traffic is coming from, what people are doing, what pages are being used. That's why in my previous Marketing Monday, I went over uh, understanding Instagram analytics and insights to understand who your audience is on Instagram uh, and, and what content resonates with them the most. And then, um, and then understanding what content doesn't as well. So yes, SEO is absolutely key to an effective website management um, uh, strategy. And D Rock comes in. D Rock or Derek, as I know him, is my assistant, and he's awesome. And uh, so, thank you very much. He says, "Hey, big bro." Hey, so thanks, man. Thanks for checking in. I know he's been busy grinding, and I'm a, we're always talking like every other day about what the hell we both need to be doing. And he's out there, you know, trying to make it happen. So I'm proud of him. All right, let's get to it. Uh, let's go to number seven, the final one. Can you believe it, folks? Can you believe it? I, I can. Okay. All right. Now, uh, number seven, we're going to be talking about building a spectacular website. As I said earlier, right? Build a spectacular website. Photography is all about presentation and visuals. That's why you saw at the top portion of your website, it's prime real estate. What did Lindsay, as well as myself, okay, me, I'm just a regular photographer doing my thing. And then you have a mega photographer like Lindsay Adler, common things. It just said name and photos, best photos up front, colorful, impactful photos in your face, nothing else, okay? presentation and visuals so when you build a website for photography brand then the website should be vivid attractive simply captivating that's why i said photos 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 if that's what you're trying to sell that's what it should be about and then the photos should be reflective of the genre that you specialize in not what you like taking photos of no oh i'm took photo of a kitty cat and da -da -da. unless you're Unless your niche is pet for portrait photography, which is totally a legitimate niche and people pay good money for it. If that's your niche, mazel tov, do that. But if it's, I want to do portraits and then you got like random street photography and some random event and, and some kitty cat and all this other jazz. No, hell to no. That's a clear signal of, Hey, I'm a newbie. Okay. Um, you can also consider it a platform to show off your photography skills as you can pub publish your portfolio. That's right. As I said, your, your website is for your best work. That's what it's there for, to showcase your best work. Okay? 
So whether you're taking uh, you're, you're taking help from a professional or creating your photography website yourself, make sure that the final result manifests creativity and passion, right? So I honestly think you don't need anybody to design your own photography website. That's ludicrous, quite honestly. Um, I use Smug Mug, okay, smugmug.com. Um, and as you know, like when a photographer gets like, I guess over 10K on on YouTube, they all of a sudden become a sponsor of Squarespace. So you know you've heard of some Squarespace. So that's another one. Wix.com does a fine job. Um, there's numerous websites that you could host your portfolio in. What a Pixie Set does does it too. Like whatever works for you works for you. Um, just make sure that um that you concentrate on the design and that it has templates or design capabilities that makes it dumb easy and simple for you to do as fast as you want it to. Like it doesn't take forever. Um, um, but definitely you don't need to hire someone to, to build it. Now, if you did want someone to look over it, well, my friends, okay. I can help you with that. All you gotta do is email me. Okay. For a, uh, I do 30 and 60 and and if you wanted more than that, minute consultations and talk about your online marketing strategy, your social media strategy, and your content development for sure. You could just send me an info, uh, email at info at robertsilverphotography.com. And of course I can help you. But if you just have some quick questions, well, go ahead. Check out my Patreon page. Go ahead and subscribe there. That would be awesome. Help support the cause at uh, patreon.com at Robert Seale Photography. And I'll be more than glad to answer any questions, uh, give a portfolio review. If you want a portfolio review, I definitely am available for that. Or a website overall review and how, how it looks aesthetically and what areas of opportunities that you can uh, improve on and what areas you need to get rid of, okay? Because sometimes it's hard to be honest with ourselves. Am I right? So let's just be real. Um, all right, now, now that we hit the tail end. This is a great time. If you have any last minute questions, concerns, etc., now is the time. Okay. Now is the time because um my throat's getting dry. Oh, let me drink some more of this tea. Hey, uh, you or may already know, but I mean, I can't get over Yeti uh thermoses. I have a big one, and, and I wanted this one. This was in my shopping cart, this 20-ounce. Uh, it had the lid, and you could kind of, like, shut it and close it and open it and drink it. And my buddy gave me this one. I love the Yeti. I, who, who, uh, am I the only one? But I think Yeti makes some great stuff, and it keeps my stuff hot as hell. All damn day. So shout out to Yeti, even though they don't sponsor my show. That's okay. You know what I'm saying? I still love them. All right? Um... Earlier, just like best way to support this channel, please. Cheapest way is just smash that like for me, share and subscribe. Let the algo know that um that the, you, you're you're appreciating the content I'm making, and that you would like to see more content like this. Cause uh, you know what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to get to 10k, baby. I'm trying to get to 10k. All right. I'm barely touching 5k. I think um. I deserve 10K, but you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna show you how I deserve it by working harder. That's what I'm going to do. So on um, Thursday, I'll be going live again and for Let's Talk Photography, and we're going to be talking about – hold on. Let me see if I made the graphic yet. I thought I made the graphic. Um, let's see here if I made the graphic. I should have. Beep, beep, boop. Uh, did I make the graphic? That's for the branding. Could have sworn because I was working on it earlier today. Ah, uh, yes, we're going to be talking about the future of photography and what that looks like. All right, because quite honestly, it's looking it's looking rough. It's looking rough, and I'm going to share with you for a few reasons why I'm saying that, as well as a few reasons for you to help weather the storm. OK, because. Um, just as the with the economy where the haves and have nots, that division is getting wider and wider. Also, with the easy entry into photography and 
the amount of things your potential client may expect you to be able to do is ever increasing, okay? As well as the effects of modern technology, ergo artificial intelligence. So there's a lot of things working that can, uh, working, um, uh, that um, will be dramatically affecting the future of photography for good and for worse. So we're going to talk about a few things that is happening that can either help or hinder our ability as photographers. And it's best to stay um, abreast to what's going on in this ever-changing landscape. It's happening at a very rapid pace. And um, having the old school mindset is not going to help you out unless you just want to shoot to shoot as an enthusiast, go for it. But me, I love shooting, but I also, it's my profession, okay? And uh, for those who want to turn it into at least a part-time profession, then this will be a great conversation. And I want to hear from you too. Like what what areas on Thursday what uh, that you think in the future are going to be dramatically um, uh, influenced and changed in photography? Um, looks like I have a couple of questions. Hold on, let me turn this off. Here we go. Pi comes in. Hey, Pi. And Pi is a uh, Patreon member, so I have to give him a good old. Oh, yeah. That's right, brother. Thank you very much for your support. Great show as usual, Robert. Thank you, Pi. I really appreciate your continued support. Thank you very much. Um, I really have, I really, you'd be amazed. There'd be days before I go live. I don't even want to go live. I'm not going to lie. I'm hungry or just not feeling it, whatever. But as soon as I turn on my Instagram to let people know I'm going live. I'm ready to go. I'm like, I'm super pumped. So it's because of you folks. That's right. It's because of you. You're the winners here. Okay. And you guys pump me up and hopefully I turn around and pump you up right back. Okay. So thank you all for your continued support. Uh, Cooley comes in 30 ounce all the way and fits in my Kerrig. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The Yeti baby. If y'all don't know about the Yeti, I'm telling you, the Yeti is no joke. I don't know. I want to get a Yeti that has my logo right here. What do you think about that? Should I try to get that? A Yeti with my logo? I think that'd be super clean. I'm not sure how much it would be, but I'm willing to get like one. You know what I mean? And uh, that'd be pretty dope. But shout out to Yeti. They make some great stuff. Ironically, it says designed in America, but made in China. So, pfft. There you go. Wah, wah, you know. Can't win them all. Uh, but still great products. Um, Cooley says, what time Thursday? 6 p.m., my friend, for Let's Talk Photography. So I think that's 8 o'clock for you, maybe. Um, but it will be on Thursday evening where we're going to be talking about the future of photography and what things are talking about. If you guys have a chance, go ahead and check out Tony and Chelsea Northrup's video they did, I want to say it was a week or so ago. I posted it on my Patreon page, folks. So just scroll down about their great. It was a great discussion about AI and how it's affecting photography. And they talked about the pros and cons. It was a great discussion. I believe it's on their podcast, but you can watch the video between Tony and Chelsea Northrup. Fantastic. I, as I said, if you go to my Patreon, subscribe to my Patreon, you just scroll down and you can see the video for yourself or just go to their channel. But, you know, or do both, you know, support, support, support the, uh, the movement here. Um, but it was a great discussion. And that's what kind of made me really think about, wow, there is there's so many things at play right now. And uh, I wanted to bring that discussion to all of you. So let's talk. The, I, and if you want to come live with me um, and be a part of the conversation. Thursday is a great day. That's why it's called Let's Talk Photography. It's not just about me talking. At least I don't want it to be about just me talking. I want it to be about us, the community. And uh, Thursday, if you want to come in, you just let me know. I'll send you a link. And then you could come in, join the conversation. Because this is really going to be whatever affects photography affects us all. Right? So... And I do want to say before I leave that next month I am going to uh, WPPI in, in, in Las Vegas. So stay tuned for some live shows. I will be going live. I'm also going to be, I'm thinking I'm going to go live on the expo floor on, on YouTube. 
And so stay tuned for some dope live footage as long as the connection is good. If not, I'll make it a video and I'll post it of uh, all the toys and whatever else they got displayed on the expo. And um, so definitely stay tuned for that. I'll let you know how WPPI goes. And, uh, and then as um, soon as I get back from WPPI on the 9th, the next day I drive down to LA for what? <laughs> LA Fashion Week, folks. So a lot of stuff coming up, a lot of content. So, you know, just hang in there. Appreciate all of your support. Oh, Cooley says, Going back in time. Okay, yeah, that's right. You better believe it. Um, so where are we? I think I pretty much wrapped up a lot of the stuff here. Okay, it sounds like I, I, I got everybody's questions, comments, etc. Now, of course, if you haven't followed me already, shame on you. What the heck are you doing? Go ahead and follow me on Facebook at Robert Silver Photography. You go check me out on Instagram at Robert Silver Photography and on Tickety Talk 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 at Robert Silver Photography. And I am also on Twitter. That's right. Me and Elon Musk are both tweeting. But me, I'm tweeting at Rob Silver Photog. Okay. So make sure you go ahead and follow me. If you have any questions or com uh, uh, questions about your marketing or your website or your portfolio review, you want me to take a look at that? Go ahead. Hit me up for a consultation. Okay, info at robertsilverphotography.com. And please feel free to support me. This is the best way to support me. It's right here at Patreon at patreon.com slash robertsilverphotography. And I will be posting daily educational content and industry updates and everything else about photography on my Patreon. Okay. Oh, I have a last minute comment. What in the heck is this? Cooley says, send me a link. Uh, Cooley, do you want me to send you a link to Patreon or to, uh, how about the, uh, Andre says, how about the idea we talked about my email? Oh, I'm going to email you back, Andre. You had some great ideas. So shout out to you for those great ideas. Cooley, send me a link. Are you talking about, e Cooley, send me a quick email. Info at robertsilverphotography.com. And then let me know which link you need. Okay. All right. Now, with that said, uh, let me turn this off. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I'm Robert Silver. And, of course, keep shooting, stay creative. Thank you for watching. Hi, Robert Silver here. And I have a question. Have you been struggling with attracting clients? What about ways to scale and grow your business? Or have you been conflicted with how to use the latest social media apps and trends to grow your audience and influence? Marketing Monday is about helping photographers and any other business really to increase their digital presence with little to no cost by leveraging social media and other creative tools available on the market, as well as keeping you updated on all the latest digital marketing trends happening today. Tune in with me every Monday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on my YouTube channel for strategies, techniques, tips, and advice on how to help build your brand online.